The appearance of various false messiahs is a major sign of the end time. While many anxiously expect the return of the Lord Jesus, many have been swayed by a particular Jewish messiah. Even more shocking are the miracles and signs this messiah performs. Who is this Jewish messiah? What miracle has he performed? Keep watching as we answer these questions. You've probably heard of some of the numerous false prophets who have claimed to be the Messiah over the years. However, the man we are talking about is very different from everyone we have ever encountered. Let's first examine who a Messiah is before talking about him. First, let's talk about who a Messiah is. Messiah is a translation from the Hebrew word Mashiach, which means anointed one or chosen one. Although several examples of prophets, priests, kings, and judges were anointed throughout the Bible, the Messiah is unique. The Messiah has been designated as God's chosen for a certain function. The Jews were in desperate need of a deliverer at the time of Jesus' birth. The Romans viewed Judea as a backward nation populated by insurgents. At the same time, the Jews looked to the prophet king, the promised Messiah, who they believed would deliver them from Rome and establish a new and magnificent kingdom in Israel. Even though certain people staged periodic uprisings that Rome put down. But Jesus was not the swashbuckling king that the Israelites had anticipated. Rome wasn't completely destroyed by him, at least not right away. Even though the Roman Empire fell apart just a few hundred years after Jesus lived on earth, Christianity has persisted for almost 2,000 years. Despite not being the warrior-like king they had anticipated, Jesus is one who had been anointed because he embodied the roles of the king, the priest, and the prophet. As the supreme priest, he provided an ideal sacrifice of himself via his death to atone for sin and to make peace between God and us. More than 300 prophecies are fulfilled by the birth and life of Jesus Christ. The virgin birth in Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14, the suffering servant in Isaiah 53, the descent to Bethlehem in Micah, chapter 2, verse 2, the victorious entry into Jerusalem in Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, and being pierced in the hands and feet in Psalm 22, verse 16, are just a few examples. However, since the first century, there have been various fake messiahs. They manifest when someone proclaims themselves to be the messiah, or when a Christian denomination breaks from the simple interpretation of God's word to characterize Jesus as something other than he is. Numerous letters from the apostles to the churches cautioned Christians about false instructors in the presence of false Christs and false prophets. By this, you will know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that accepts Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not admit Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, John wrote. But today, we are talking about a Jewish rabbi named Rav Shlomo Yehuda. So who is Rav Shlomo Yehuda? In the land of Eretz Israel, a child named Rav Shlomo Yehuda was born in 1988 as an only child. His family tree was rooted in Yemen and Syria, with his paternal grandfather descending from Yemeni sages and his maternal grandfather emigrating from Aleppo. Growing up, Rav Shlomo faced difficulties in childhood due to his father's injury-related illness. However, he found solace in studying the Torah and the Talmudic texts often moving to tears as he read about the Zadokim. His followers claim he was a Torah prodigy, able to recite many Torah and Talmudic texts by heart. He has been doing this since he was a young boy, earning him much respect, and he is considered a genius. This, combined with his passion and devotion to learning, earned him the title Yannika, a term referring to a child prodigy in the Jewish text Zohar. It didn't matter if you were Litvish Yeshivich or Chasidich, people from all sectors started to come to Rav Shlomo Yehuda when he started giving regular Torah lessons known as Sheurim in various communities around the country when he was 18 years old. At the age of 20, he got married and moved to Rishon Lezion, where he still stays today 
and has been giving Shiram daily for the past 10 years while striving to stay out of the public eye. The Jidoli Hador, some of whom attend his Shiram, gave the order two years ago for his Shiram to be held in halls and auditoriums, frequently drawing over a thousand people at a time. There are also several surprises. He frequently encourages the audience to vote on a topic for him to speak about. Then he takes off, gathering knowledge from worldwide and creating a tapestry of light and wisdom for a spellbound audience. Even though he is just a young Avrik, his study classes draw people of all ages and stages, from the old Jasidim to the Torah scholars and everyone in between. The brim of his cap barely covers his eyes as he stands on the dais in crowded halls and explains every verse of the Torah by heart, thrilling the audience with his depth and breadth, while also appearing to be erasing his very Yeshua. In fact, if you listen closely to the whispers of his followers, you will discover that Rav Shlomo Yehuda is no ordinary scholar. In a video, a father spoke of the Yanuka and his daughter's wedding with so much reverence and admiration as if he were speaking of a divine being. Crowds of people swarmed around him, eager to bask in his presence and even touch him. Some say he has the power to perform miracles during his lectures and at weddings. With rumors swirling, that he is a holy man destined to bring peace to the world. The way his followers behave around him is eerily similar to the way people once flocked to Jesus. The aura of mystery and reverence surrounding Rav Shlomo Yehuda only adds to his enigmatic charm. What are some of the miracles he is said to have performed? The first miracle we would be talking about is of the paralytic man. He was sick and immobile with various transfusions in and out of him. However, according to him, he was wheeled to see the Yannicka, and as the Yannicka descended the stairs, he was completely whole, just like that. No more wheeling, no more transfusion, no more doctor's appointments. Well, that is definitely amazing and definitely supernatural. Another miracle was more like the prophetic utterance. This man, who had been single and searching for a while, met with the Yannicka, and he told him that his soulmate would be coming that very day just according to the word of the Yannicka. He met his soulmate that same day. Another guy had his prison sentence exempted from the words of the Yannicka. If you think that was great, wait till you hear this next miracle. A particular guy had malignant tumors. Now, even if you aren't a doctor or medical professional, you know the mere name of that sounds scary and serious. However, after a short conversation with Yannicka, he told him that the tumors would be gone. And guess what? The tumor disappeared. Also, a man had his surgery for gastrointestinal pains scheduled for the next day, met with Yannicka, who declared over him that the pains would disappear. And they did. The last miracle for today is that of a father who had a sick son. His son had been down with liver cancer and it seemed as though nothing was working short of a liver transplant that his parents could not afford. His father brought him to the Yannicka, who spoke over him and healed him. It is imperative to note that in all these stories and narrations, not once was the glory ascribed to God, Jehovah, or any divine being. They ascribe it all to the Yannicka, as though it was done by his power, or he is a deity, which is worrisome. The question we should be asking is, why is it worrisome? The seventh major character mentioned in this portion of Revelation is the second beast, seen in Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. The term false prophet is frequently used to describe this person. The beast is from the land, unlike the last one from the water. Because the earth is frequently connected with Israel, many people believe the false prophet will be Jewish. The second creature had the appearance of a lamb, but the voice of a dragon. Because every reference to the Antichrist, or the spirit of Antichrist, in the New Testament has a religious context, this beast can be identified as the Antichrist rather than the first. This is just another attempt to imitate the genuine Christ, who performed several miracles throughout his earthly ministry. Christ's miracles were intended to persuade people that he was the promised Messiah. The Apostle John 
built his gospel around the miracles or signs that Jesus accomplished. According to him, Jesus did many other signs in the sight of the disciples, which are not contained in his gospel, but these are written so that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that we may have life in his name. Unfortunately, the false prophet's display of miraculous signs proves effective. He misdirects the inhabitants of the planet. 2 John chapter 1 verse 7 mentions this deceit, saying that many con artists would reject Jesus Christ's outward look. The Antichrist and the one who lies is this person. Furthermore, even Jesus predicted that fake miracles would eventually lead people astray. This is a supernatural ability. Or given the development of computer-generated images and other technologies, it might denote something wholly made up. If you think this is scary, brace yourself, because something scarier is mentioned in verse 17. The second beast similarly uses the beast's mark as a universal identity. God was said to have sealed his people in earlier verses. Sphlagis, a signet or signature that expresses worth and protection, is the world's Greek root. However, the word shargama, which livestock owners use to brand their animals, denotes the mark of Satan. Later passages in Revelation make it apparent that receiving the mark of the beast is not an accident. Individuals who do so are aware that doing so will result in them worshiping the beast and rejecting God. Christians and other people who refuse to take the mark will be unable to purchase or sell anything and many will be put to death. So what does this mean for the world? It is uncertain what the mark of the beast will look like or how it will function. There isn't enough information in the Bible to be certain. However, a person's life will be cut off from modern culture without the mark. He will be unable to sell anything, obtain medical care, obtain food, or find shelter. Giving people the mark of the beast will be extremely evil. However, in Mark chapter 13, verses 21 through 23, Jesus already spoke of the appearance of many false messiahs, not just one. So we can assume that there would be more self or crowd acclaimed messiahs. Even if Yannicka Rav Shlo Yehuda does miracles or recites the Torah or teaches with great wisdom, he is not the Messiah. The coming of the Messiah is described in the Bible as visible in the sky, on the clouds, with trumpet blasts and angels. When this happens, which it will, the Jews will finally understand and accept Jesus as the Messiah. We've come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching till the end. Which of the miracles do you find most shocking? Does this mean that the Antichrist is here already? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more.